Hello everyone and welcome back. So me and the Gunmaster hope you enjoyed that little showcase. And this video will be dedicated uh, to show each component of this fountain and the general idea how it works. So we prepared a little uh, map here that explains all the um, components we thought was worth showing. So um, yeah, let's start with the first one. Alright, so the first component I want to show you is a customizable repeater. It is using two hoppers, meaning you can put in any amount of items and it will create the delay accordingly to the amount of items. You power this green block, it will depower this torch and powering that torch. Basically these two are getting reversed, so all the items in here will flow into here. And when that is done, they are going to flow back. And this piston here is basically half period or falling edge of the half period of the time giving an output from here or possibly here and uh, if you take an output from this comparator you can take the falling edge from it getting the longest delay possible so let's see it in action and there you have it uh, we are using this I think three times in this fountain, and I will show you now where they are. Alright, so one of the delays is up here. This one is a um, little bit different, it's using an output from here, from this hopper, and uh, instead of using this piston monostable I showed, it's using a torch and repeater version. The output would be here, that goes into the double extender swapper part. For the glowstone but yeah that is one place and one other place is down here this one is rebuilt a little bit as well instead of having a block here with a torch a torch over there it goes down here having the torch here and the torch here power this dust and this torch and yeah so that's those two rebuilt and um, they're really useful so, before showing you the last one, which is down here, I'm going to show you a little bit more how this fountain actually works. First of all, um, it is generating its own eyes, meaning it has a an hatch that opens, and uh, an ice machine down here that tries to make ice. And this machine only opens when it's depleted of ice, meaning I think uh, it has five uses, and when it counts to five, it's gonna open the hatch, generate five more eyes, and close the hatch. And uh, when it's open and trying to generate eyes, it's actually sending a signal to a big AND gate, which is this. It com it's coming from this torch, it takes a pretty difficult route from a counter up there. I'm gonna go through the counter soon. And anyways, this torch powers this uh, piston, preventing any input, meanwhile the eyes is generating. And there's another torch here. And this is basically a torch coming from another AND gate, which is coming from the ice detection, uh, the ice melt detection. So when um, <coughs> it is pushing ice up here, then it retracts, gets a, glow, uh, yeah, gets a glowstone back up again, and puts the glowstone in this position. Then it goes down and up again, waits a few uh, a bit down and up again all, all the time until this ice melts because yeah it needs an update ice doesn't melt I mean <laughs> ice doesn't flow by itself when it melts so it needs an update <coughs> so when it melts it's gonna flow down let me show you here it's gonna flow down take a weird path down here into here lifting this boat up and when this boat is lifted up, it's gonna unpower this pressure plate, power this torch, powering these two, it's a latch, and it's gonna stop this clock. And this clock is the clock that uh, sends the uh, call a glowstone column update, and it's sending every 16 items or so. And um, yes. So anyways, this latch here is also controlling this AND gate. Let's see if we can follow it. 
from here through this comparator torch torch here and the torch here so meaning if it's if it's um, trying to melt that ice um, it will be powered like so meaning you cannot press it and um, down here another part of the end gate it's the anti-spam delay meaning you cannot really uh, you cannot press it until all the items have flown into here and back again um, preventing you from T flip flopping this um, ma um, main T flip flop of the entire fountain so yeah and as you can see this is a little bit different from the other two it's rebuilt one uh, hopper is being powered from this repeater and one from this uh, dust here well this torch and dust and yeah you may wonder why the hell there's a repeater here and that's because of this does not power this repeater but this will don't ask me why minecraft is minecraft and there you have it all right so moving on to the next part here is a pretty interesting uh, um, contraption me and the gunmaster came up with it's a um, one wide tileable pulse multiplier meaning for any amount of items you have in these droppers you will get the amount that amount of pulses on this red line and um, the speed of those pulses is controlled with the delay you have here you can basically have any delay if you go around a bit more but and um, yeah the length of the delay you might have to regulate but that is depending what you need so anyways it's using a pretty weird um, a pretty interesting method so when you press this item this piston will push up being budded it won't retract because it's being powered from all these items in these droppers so <coughs> you push it up this pushes down meaning this clock will start it's this is basically starting making the clock complete down here <coughs> so for every time this clock pulses one item will be removed from these droppers as you can see they, they are powering the repeaters are powering the droppers and for every and every time an item goes uh, every time it pulses one item flows into this um, hopper and these hoppers are actually locked and only the one you press is locked so if you follow the signal it goes through the piston through this block into this cauldron which is only sending <coughs> a one signal strain into this comparator into this block that powers this drop, uh, hopper meaning this will be locked if you press that button and it's gonna continue that clock until this is empty and when this is empty this will instantly retract because it will detect it because of but and then it's gonna flow back so um, the meaning the reason why we have uh, this line here and only powering one slice independently is, is that the reset is much faster so you can press the first one then immediately after the next one then the next one so you can have any amount of pulses on any of these slices and we have this um, redstone block here to make sure you can have this 15 long if you'd really need it. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Let's try it. And let's try four poses. One, two, three, four. Then off. So maybe try two. And there you have it. And um, let me show you where it is before I stop. Of course, I took the wrong way. Here it is. One is two, three, and five. So this is basically uh, controlling how many pulses this uh, slime elevator thing we have is getting. It's, it's only needing pulse. It's only need. Ah, it only needs pulses from one place. So, and that place is just taking a route here through through the mess. Oh, yeah. What you can see in front of you now is a counter. Uh, me and the gunmaster came up with it. We needed it for the ice machine. And it counts how many ice we have left in the system and opens the ice 
hatch or the hatch for the ice generator accordingly so basically <clears throat> we have five items and if we pulse it five times it's gonna be depleted of ice it's gonna swap state and turn on the ice generator and when the ice generator have um, counted five it's gonna put all the five items back and swap state again meaning uh, the machine can be used again so as you can see um, it's really easy so let's see uh, if I press this button five times it's gonna swap state so let's see there you go and now doing more won't do anything and if you press this five more times it's gonna swap state all you need up here is one item and if you plan to have the outputs like this you need slabs because uh, if you have this it's gonna bud and not work or you could use a piston alternatively you could have an output on the side and this machine is being used up here on this machine next up we have this um, interesting uh, piston conveyor belt and this is something pretty old but um, it's uh, really interesting it's using hoppers to send the pulses for each slice and it's using the double extender glitch so basically this will fire up this will retract and these two will be depowered at the same time but it will still go back down so um, let's just take a look at it and if you have an ice, side, uh, ice block it would uh, transport it like so so it works by putting an item in here the item will flow then back again and the item will trigger these uh, comparators and that's how that works and um, yeah so what we have here is a um, inverter circuit this is probably one of the hardest thing we ever worked on and we use it quite a lot in this build actually and without it it's gonna be it would be probably impossible but here we have it this is the most compact form we could compact it to it's only two by one by one <coughs> and uh, if you place a piston here you can clearly see it inverts and that's a really nice feature of the torch you can actually have outputs from anywhere and this inverted circuit actually do not power slabs but you could maybe have that as an, a feature you could see it as a, a benefit so um, yeah I don't know it's a, a pretty good build I'd say we spent a lot of hours on this uh, to make sure to like and finally we have this this is the um, core of this fountain uh, it's the slime elevator conveyor or whatever you want to call it it it's um, using a pretty interesting technique basically you send pulses fr from top and the pulse will travel them um, down here and into there then around into here so it goes from up to down so if I pulse this here now as you can see uh, this slime construct goes down and every time one of these slices activate it retracts back again so they become immovable blocks making the slime move unhindered and these comparators take output from the op oppositing uh, or opposing furnaces and uh, that basically makes it so you can um, pulse this clock a lot faster uh, than if it wasn't there otherwise it would mess up entirely so um, I said before you could oh, uh, we only pulse it from the top but that's not true we actually pulse it from the middle sometimes as well uh, yeah so it's pretty interesting because now when it's fully retracted, so if you pulse it once, it's gonna only push up once. And then again. And that is because the signal is coming from up and down, and if it cannot do anything here, it won't do anything because it's blocked. And then when it comes to the one that can do something, it will push it up once, then the one below it will fire and that won't really push anything. 
so it's some sort of uh, some sort of T flop flip flop action. If I continue doing this, and now it will go down again. So if you're um, interested in exactly how this looks, I will do a little bit of flying here to try to demonstrate. It goes down to this. And this world will be up for download for anyone interested in exactly how it's looking. See these torches. And the furnaces with a sword in each, alternating. The immovable block blocks here and here. And um, yeah, so I think that was all I had to show. And um, Make sure to like if you like this video and I might continue to do more videos in the future, who knows. <laughs> See ya!